Welcome to the General Service Administration's Office of Government-Wide Policies Federal Real Property Profile Management System, or FRPPMS, training. In this video, we will be covering what is FRPP, user roles and agency hierarchy, how to sign in and reset your password, general navigation, asset search and summary reports, manual data modification, submission, and removal process, data submission, modification, and deletion of multiple assets, error reports, administrative functions, data anomaly reports with the VNV process and the analytics dashboard, and finally, VNV goals and agency compliance. This training video, along with FRPP user guides, will assist FRPP users to successfully access and upload data into the FRPP database. FRPPMS was created under Executive Order 13327 and is the federal database of all real property under the custody and control of all executive branch agencies, except when otherwise required for reasons of national security, in accordance with the Federal Asset Sales and Transfer Act, or FOSTA, of 2016. Agencies are required to submit data to FRPPMS on an annual basis following the end of the fiscal year. Data is reported at the constructed asset level for each land, building, and other structure that is owned, leased, or otherwise managed by an agency. FRPPMS was created to centralize information as well as promote the efficient and economical use of the federal government's real property assets. We are required by law and executive order to go through this data submission and validation process annually. This system will be available to users on September 21st and submissions are due following the end of that fiscal year on December 15th. Users in the system are provisioned with specific roles for the responsibilities they need to carry out, each carrying their own access and permissions. Read users have access to asset data for their assigned agency or bureau. The users cannot create or edit any data. Write users can view, create, and edit asset data manually for their assigned agency or bureau. Data submission users can view, create, and edit asset data in bulk for their assigned agencies or bureau via XML or CSV file. Data analytics users can utilize the FRPP dashboard for an analysis of their agency's anomalies and reduce the footprint, or RTF. Data anomaly users, which have access to data anomaly reports, and the Anomaly via VTAB are responsible for generating data anomaly reports and then resolving the data anomalies, as well as providing confirmation for the resolution to GSA. The agency administrator can view, edit, and delete for their assigned agency. In essence, they can do everything mentioned above and are responsible for uploading and submitting the data. These users are also responsible for hitting the Confirm button to complete the data submission process for the fiscal year. Access to the records will depend on what agency and level the user is in. This is what we refer to as the agency hierarchy. Access to information will flow down from the top level. Level 1 being top agency level, for example, the Department of Energy. Level 2 being sub-agency level, for example, Doe Oak Ridge Operations Office. And level 3 being the Bureau Office level, for example, a Chicago Operations Office. To sign into FRPP, you will start off by going to the login page at realpropertyprofile.gov. We recommend bookmarking this page for future access. The login page is broken up into four main sections. The About FRPP MS area is a brief statement of the system's purpose. The Public FRPP Data section provides a link to where the data can be accessed by the public. The Resources and Contacts area provides access to helpful, related links and app owner contacts. And finally, the Login form provides three ways to access the system. Two options under General User Login, with an additional option below for GSA Single Sign-On, but that is for GSA staff only. Registered Max Federal Community Members may use OMB Max with their Common Access Cards or Personal Identity Verification Card by choosing the Max Login option. If you are interested in this login option but are not yet a Max Federal Community user, please visit the following website to register your CAC or PIV card with MAS. 
If you sign in with your username and password, you will be redirected to a page requiring a verification code sent by email. If you have a mobile number associated with your account, you will also have the option, in addition to email, to set up a two-factor authentication app, like Google Authenticator, to complete your verification process. When you select the Authenticator app option, a QR code will appear on your screen. Just go to the Authenticator application you have on your mobile phone, and choose to add by scanning the QR code with your camera. A numerical sequence will appear on your phone screen. Input this token to continue. Next time you choose this option, you'll only need to retrieve the verification code from your Authenticator app to get in. If you would like to utilize the Authenticator app verification feature, but don't have your mobile number associated with your account, once you have entered the database, you can do so by clicking your name drop-down in the top right corner and selecting Edit Contact Info. For detailed step-by-step -step instructions, a link to the document FRPP Database Community Login Using Authenticator App can be found below the Username and Password section. However, if you have forgotten your password, you will need to click on the Forgot Your Password hyperlink below the Username Login. When you click on the Forgot Your Password hyperlink, you will be guided to a page that will ask you to input your username and click Continue. The following page will ask you to check your email. You will receive two separate emails for this verification process. One email will be titled GSA Login Code and have a verification code for you. The other email will be titled Your New FRPP Password. This email includes a hyperlink to a secure page requesting a verification code. Input your verification code on this page and click Continue. You may now change your password to fit the minimum requirements of eight characters, one letter, and one number. You should now be in the database and greeted by the home page, which features a global search at the top that allows you to enter terms on which to search all records. Under the search bar will be a tabular selection of available pages to you. On the left-hand side of this page, you will be able to have a quick view of your current access, the email contacts for the help desk, documents, and templates, and any training materials or user guides. And on the main portion of this page, you will find general information about the application, as well as a broadcast message from the application owners that may relate to your submission. The Asset Search tab will be accessible by both read and write users, data submission users, and agency admin. This tab serves as a dedicated filter option so that you can search for specific asset data as needed. The Add Asset tab is accessible by write users and agency admin. Here you are able to add assets as necessary. The Data Submission tab is accessible by data submission users and agency admin. This page is where you can perform mass data loads, deletions, or edits for your asset data. The D2D Reports tab is accessible by only D2D users. This page will present you with the icon labeled D2D as a link to the D2D website. The Administrations tab is accessible only by agency admin. This page has two features. The User Search helps you find current users for your agency or bureau in the database, and Inventory Clearance, which clears your asset data rolled over from the previous year. The Bureau Summary Reports tab is accessible by agency admin only and is where you can generate a summary report to compare variances in reporting years.
The Annual Summary Reports tab is accessible by agency admin only and contains pre-generated reports to select for your convenience. The Anomaly Reports tab is accessible by Data Anomaly users and agency admin. This page is where you will generate automated reports in which data anomalies are identified. These reports are only available after the next round of data anomalies are generated generally after February 1st of the year following the most recent December 15th data submission. The Dashboard tab is accessible by analytics users only and presents a data-rich analysis of your agency's data anomalies as well as the Reduce the Footprint, or RTF, detailed summary. The Anomaly VNV tab is accessible by Data Anomaly users and Agency Admin. This tab presents all the records of data anomalies for you to review and set the status of the anomalies. The Trainings tab contains all the training documents, data dictionaries, and videos to assist you in successfully completing your FRPP duties. And all the way to the left, the Reports tab is available for you to search specific reports, or start from scratch and create a new one. Through the Asset Search tab, users can perform an advanced search for specific assets, or overall summary reports depending on your access. The report field in the top right of the page consists of various report types available to you and is the only required field needed to run the report. The important thing to take away from this list is that the Asset Staging Report is accessible to the Data Submission users and the Agency Admin. The remaining reports are only accessible by the Read and Write users and the Agency Admin. So depending on your role, the reports that are available to you will differ. All the other fields on the page are additional fields you can use to filter your search down to whatever asset or assets you're looking for. After you finish making your selections, Click the search button at the top or bottom right corner to generate the report. There are two ways to create a copy of the report for your computer, Printable View and Export Details. Both are spreadsheets, but we recommend Printable View as it contains the filter criteria of the report, which is useful when a downloaded file is shared with others so they know the limitations of the results the report was based on. We highly encourage the use of reports that have been set up in the system through the Asset Search tab, since the system sets these tailored filters automatically. However, if you would like to create your own reports, click on the Reports tab to get started. To create a brand new report, simply click on the New Report button at the top of the Reports tab. Then you will want to be sure that you select the FRPP underscore Asset Report type. When on the New Reports page, please add the following filters at the very least to ensure that you are getting the best and most accurate results. Fiscal year equal to the current year, asset record type equal to uploaded, and active equal to true. If the filters are not applied correctly, the search will produce a different set of results. The reporting tool is a powerful feature that can be customized by various date types, filters, buckets, summary formulas, groupings, and more, all through a drag and drop functionality for your ease of use. You can add a single field directly to the report or to your filters by locating it in the field bar on the left of the page and simply dragging it over to where you want it to be. You can select multiple fields to add, remove, or reorder. Drag an entire folder to add all of its fields. To select multiple fields or columns, press Ctrl for Windows or Command for Mac. When you add multiple fields, they appear in the report in the order selected. And when you're complete, just run the report or save if you want to come back to it. For write users and agency admin, if you're an agency or bureau with only a few properties, we recommend manually adding assets through the Add Asset tab.
At the beginning of a new fiscal year, GSA copies all existing assets from the previous year and saves them in the current fiscal year, so that agencies do not have to start from scratch when inputting their data. For new assets that were not included in the previous fiscal year, or if the agency admin has performed an inventory clearance to remove all assets, you will fill in the Add Asset page and save to manually create a new asset record. Any field with a red bar next to it must be filled out before being saved. Otherwise, an error message will pop up and prevent you from saving. After entering all the data, double check that all the necessary information is input correctly. Then click the Save button, located at the top right and bottom right corners of the page. If there are any errors in the form, or threshold warnings, a list of specific fields that need to be updated in order to be compliant will be provided at the top of the form. Keep in mind that as you enter data into the required fields, other corresponding fields will also become required. For example, if you set the real property type to building, then the square footage field becomes mandatory. If you do not understand the errors or what needs to be fixed, use the data dictionary to help you understand what fields require alphanumeric or just numeric data, and to assist you in following the business rules for the current fiscal year. After correcting the errors, press Save again. The asset will then become a part of the agency's or bureau's inventory for the current fiscal year. If you want to add another asset, you would select the Add Asset tab again, fill out another form, and click Save. If you are looking to edit an existing asset manually, first you will need to locate it by using the Asset Search tab. Once you have located your asset in the report, click on the FRPP Asset ID as seen here in the leftmost column. Now that you're on the Assets page, you can click Edit and modify the data as needed before saving. And to delete an asset manually, you will need to click the Delete button on the Asset Record page. For larger agencies with many properties, we recommend using the XML or CSV templates through the bulk upload process on the Data Submissions tab. Before even starting, however, remember that GSA will have already copied over all of the existing assets from the previous fiscal year and saved them in the application. So the first step would be for the Data Submission user and or the agency admin to decide their deletion strategy. The XML template can be found in the Data Dictionary Appendix A, or if you find both the XML and CSV templates on the left-hand side of the FRPP homepage, under FRPP MS Document Library. These templates are useful for agencies with 100 or more properties to submit, where you can either use XML or CSV file to enter all of an agency's data at once, eliminating the tedious task of manually entering or updating hundreds of assets at a time. So once you're ready, you'll get started by clicking on the link to download the file. Under the introduction of the XML file, you'll find the opening XML file tags for the action attribute, agency code, and fiscal year. The action attribute tells FRPPMS what to do with the file. There are three options. Add, which means to add the new asset. Modify, which means you're updating an existing asset. And delete, which will delete the asset. However, you cannot mix and match the action attributes throughout the file, meaning you cannot add an asset within the same file in which you are deleting an asset. So you will need to upload multiple files if you wish to use all three attributes, because the system will only accept one action attribute per file. So depending on the deletion strategy chosen, you will either use modify for the action attribute if you are updating the previous year's information, or if the agency admin went forward with the inventory clearance, you will just use the Add action to input the property data from scratch. For those of you using CSV templates, once you open the file, you'll see an example of what the values should look like. The CSV file uses the pipe symbol as a delimiter, so it would look like a sequence of values separated by vertical lines, as seen here. The format allows for the header and subsequent records to follow. The header will note the HDR tag, 
the reporting year, the action attribute for add, modify, or delete, and lastly, your two-digit agency code. All the rows that follow that header will be considered a new record. The recorded asset values must follow the structured sequence of fields as defined in the CSV Technical Reporting Guidance section of the FRPP Data Dictionary for either building, land, or structure asset types. Just like in the XML file, please note that you cannot mix and match the action attributes throughout the file, meaning you cannot add an asset within the same file in which you are deleting an asset. It is recommended that you have a file that does not exceed 50 megabytes for XML or 5 megabytes for CSV. If you have a file that is over 50 megabytes, you would have to split the file to have multiple files so it can process properly. And always save with unique names that do not include periods for every file submitted. In the past, some agencies used separate files for buildings, lands, and structures, or used separate files for different bureaus, etc. It's just an easy way to track if a specific bureau has an error. They will know which file to look into rather than searching through a massive file with multiple bureaus. Once the file is ready, the data submission user or the agency admin will then select the data submissions tab and should see the agency that the file is being uploaded for. Then select attach file. After you select attach file, you'll be brought to a new page to actually attach the file. From here, you'll be able to browse through your computer to find the file you want to attach, and then click Open. Click the Attach File button after selecting your file. If you want to select multiple files, repeat the process of choosing a file and attaching it, and then click Done once you're finished attaching all files you wish to upload. Selecting Done will bring you back to the previous data submission page, and it will show you all of the agency staged files that were attached, with the most recent file appearing at the top of the list. Once the files have been staged, you will see a status next to each file, and the system will begin to validate the files. If you see the file status is Processing, Validation in Progress, Valid, or Ready for Threshold Check, then there are no issues with adding your file. Processing means the file submission worked correctly and is currently processing. Validation in progress means the attached file is being validated against the business rules from the current fiscal year's data dictionary. Valid and ready for thresholds check will happen after you have validated all errors within the business rules. This indicates the next step is ready to be. However, there are seven additional possible statuses after processing if there was an error in your upload. Invalid means that the file has errors in it and the data business rules have failed. These errors need to be corrected by the agency admin or the data submission user, and you can correct them by using the data dictionary as your guide. You can correct them directly in the system by running an error report, but we will discuss this later on in detail. If you correct the file outside of the system, like on your computer, it will need to be reattached and validated again. The invalid CSV file status means that the CSV file that was uploaded did not have the correct CSV format or schema, which means that the system could not properly read the file because it did not conform to the business rules. This could mean that there are typos or unwanted spaces, so you will have to remove the file, update the CSV file, and reattach it so that it can be considered valid. The invalid XML file status means the same as the invalid CSV file status, but for uploaded XML files. The validation failure status means the validation process has failed, most likely an issue on the back end, so just reattach and try again. Dropped asset identification status means the attached file contains an expected error with the XML file and the system doesn't know how to process it. An email will be sent to the technical support team and the individual who uploaded the file. Please cease all activity on this file until you receive resolution steps from the support team. The Verify Threshold status means that the attached file contains a field value that falls outside of the allowed threshold. Please verify the accuracy or correct the data by using the Verify Threshold error report. The Upload Failure status simply means that the upload has failed, for a variety of reasons. So just try again. If you see the status is uploaded, this indicates that the agency admin has already selected to upload the valid file, and the records within the file have been updated and are reflected in the agency's inventory. If your upload doesn't appear at all, check to be sure your format is correct 
and that you did not have any periods in your file's name. If your data submission upload does indeed fail, you may select one of the three error reports under the Reports column next to your upload in the Data Submission page. At this point in the process, the error report will be either Validation Summary Report, Detailed Error Report, or Data Correction. The Validation Summary Report will display a summary of the validations and the number of errors by asset type. The purpose of the Validation Summary Report is that it shows how many records are contained in the file, and it also shows the error totals for the three different asset types. Both the agency admin and the data submission user can use this report so they know what to expect to change before uploading the file. The next type of report is the detailed error report. This report displays all of the errors in the file at the data element level. You can select one of these unique FRPP asset IDs to open up a record. This means that you are opening a staged record and then correcting the errors directly in the file. As a data submission user opens up the record, they will have the option to click the Edit button for the staged records. Clicking Edit will show what is missing or invalid. After making the appropriate edits, click the Save button in the top right hand corner. The record will now be updated and then you can return to the Data Submission tab. You should correct all errors in the file so that it can be re-uploaded with a valid status. After this, the agency admin can select Upload to submit the data. This means that you are opening a staged record and then correcting the errors directly in the file. As a data submission user opens up the record, they will have the option to click the edit button for the staged records. Clicking edit will show what is missing or invalid. After making the appropriate edits, click the Save button in the top right hand corner and then you can return to the Data Submission tab. You should correct all errors in the file so that it can be re-uploaded with a valid status. The Data Correction Report essentially has the same functionality as the Detailed Error Report, but all the errors for the attached file are displayed at an asset level and not at the data element level. The benefit of viewing errors at the asset level versus the data element level is that it shows the level of magnitude which may affect how an agency decides to make corrections. Once the file is free of errors created by the validation process, you will see the status change to valid, ready for threshold check, and the verify threshold button will become enabled. Once the process has run its course, if there are thresholds that need to be cleared, you will have the option to view the threshold warning report. This report will display the assets which have exceeded the value threshold set by GSA in comparison to the previous year. You can select an asset ID to access the asset record in question. On this page you will be able to see up to a thousand thresholds at a time, or you can export to Excel to view all if you have more than a thousand thresholds to view. You can individually mark assets as correct, or you can click the topmost checkmark box followed by checked records are correct. This allows you to validate multiple thresholds at once. An alternative way of viewing or editing thresholds is to click into the individual asset from the threshold warning report itself and click edit. Once you do that, you'll see the top of the page list a new section of threshold warnings particular to that asset, and you can confirm your data is accurate or edit to correct the asset from there. Once the file is free of errors, you will need to notify your agency admin so they can select Upload under the Upload column to finalize the data submission for that file. The data submitter's role is now complete, thereby updating the agency's inventory for the current fiscal year. Now we will go over the different administrative functions that are specific for the agency administrator. So let's start by going to the Administration tab. Here an agency admin can utilize the user search to find current users from their agency with access to FRPPMS. You can search for the users by their login name, first name, or last name. It will also show you whether the user is active or inactive, as well as their access level or role. You could use the user search functionality to see whether someone's account is locked and needs to reset their password, 
or update their access level. It is the agency admin's responsibility to submit a help desk ticket on their behalf. The agency admin will also have the ability to perform an inventory clearance, which as mentioned before, clears the inventory for their agency, or up to four bureaus at one time for the current fiscal year. You can use the control button on your keyboard to select more than one bureau. This clearance process will run behind the scenes and will send you an email once the clearance has been completed. You would clear an agency inventory if you had a discussion with the data submission user and they agreed that they want to start from scratch to submit their data for the current fiscal year. Only agency admin have the permission to perform an inventory clearance. There will also be a log of the different inventory clearances that have been performed for the selected agency or bureaus. It will tell you the date that the clearance process took place and it will also list who is responsible for clearing the agency's inventory. It will also have a column that will tell you whether or not the agency's inventory has been completed or not. You will not see the individual records that have been cleared. Once the inventory is cleared, it is gone for the current fiscal year. You want to make sure that you are being careful since there is no back or undo button for this process. Lastly, the agency admin is also responsible for confirming all data for the agency once all data submissions are uploaded and the agency reporting is complete. Start by going to the Data Submissions tab. The second section at the bottom of the Data Submissions tab is the Reports and Confirmed Data section, which is only visible to the agency admin. The reports you can generate will allow the agency admin to review the information that was submitted for the agency. This includes the XML or CSV files that were submitted, as well as any individual records that were added manually or updated. There are eight reports available, and the agency admin are strongly encouraged to run all reports as an accuracy check. And at the very bottom of the page, the agency admin can leave any comment they feel necessary and click the confirm button. If zero error occurs, then the data submission process for your agency or bureau will be considered complete for the current fiscal year. Once this is complete, the agency will be under a data submission blackout and no longer be able to submit data for that fiscal year unless approved by the FRPP app owners. FRPP Validation and Verification, or VNV, has three components in the following order. Business rule validation refers to an existing automated feature in FRPPMS, preventing users from entering a data element value that does not pass established business rules. It is a regular part of the data submission process. Automated data anomaly reports identify assets whose data suggests possible inconsistencies or inaccuracies. Agencies are now required to run automated anomaly detection reports in FRPPMS every February 1st after all data is uploaded to FRPPMS and the reporting period has closed. In anomaly resolution, agencies investigate whether the underlying data flagged by the anomalies are accurate or inaccurate. Agencies research the identified assets and resolve actual anomalies between February 1st and October 15th of every year. This timing enables agencies to resolve anomalies before, but not during, the FRPP reporting period. To get started with viewing your anomalies, you can go to the Anomaly Reports tab or the Anomaly VNV tab. Analytics users can also view anomalies through the Analytics Dashboard tab if your agency qualifies. The Anomaly Reports tab is there for data anomaly users and agency admin to generate automated reports in which your agency's anomalies are identified. This will be useful in your agencies investigating anomalies before addressing the anomalies in the VNV tab. There are various data anomaly reports, immediate reports, and on queue reports. Agencies must run each of these reports individually. It's important to note that the reported anomalies may not be incorrect. It could mean that the data falls outside of the wing or that a combination of data elements suggests an unlikely scenario.
For whatever report type you are looking to generate, all you'll need to do is select the applicable agency and bureau if needed, and the fiscal year. Then click on the report in the related section. The report will generate and you can export its data by clicking on Print Report. Once you are ready to address the anomalies, Data Anomaly Users and Agency Admin can access the Anomaly VNV tab to view the different types of anomalies and validate them. There will be various categories you can select by choosing a different list view in the drop down list. Those with an asterisk can only be generated through the Dashboard tab or by an Analytics user. If you wish to see more in the list, you can click on the Display Per Page drop-down in the bottom left and choose how many records you want displayed on your page. If you have a large amount of similar anomalies that you wish to narrow your scope down to for a mass decision, you can create a list view by clicking on Create New View at the top next to the List View drop-down section. On this page, you will give your list view a name, Leave the owner as all FRPP anomalies, then select the fields you wish to filter down to, with any logic that accompanies them, and finally, add the fields you wish to be displayed in your list view. Once you save, you can view this list view again at any time, however it will only be viewable to you. Any list view that is desired to be viewed publicly needs to be accepted and approved by the application owners. Following the agency's investigation of the anomalies, there are two ways to resolve a selected anomaly, by either marking its status as affirmed, noting that the element flagged as anomalous is actually correct, or error, CAS, confirming that the anomaly is indeed an error, and correcting that error in the agency's own asset management system. You can confirm one or multiple anomalies by clicking on the checkbox next to them, and marking them as Affirmed or Error CAS using the buttons at the top of the page. Or you can enter the anomalies one at a time to review them by clicking the Edit button to the left of the anomaly and change their data anomaly status from there. Once an anomaly is resolved, it will no longer count towards the agency's outstanding anomaly totals. The decision you made will be presented under the data anomaly status. If you wish to revert your decision, Reselect the anomalies and click on the Reset Status button. Data anomaly statuses marked as previously affirmed reflect prior year's anomalies that were affirmed as accurate. Agencies do not need to take any action on previously affirmed anomalies. Another way analytics users can view their agency anomaly records for the VNV process is the Dashboards tab, which allows for better visualization of the anomaly data. This page may take some time to load, depending on the amount of anomaly records your agency has, but once it is loaded, you'll be able to see a full and complete breakdown of your agency. Filters will be presented at the top of the page for you to break down your view by Agency Bureau, Anomaly Category, Anomaly Status, Anomaly Owned By, and Fiscal Year. All of these filters are multi-select and can limit the selection of other filters if narrowed down further. The unique assets will represent the total assets related to the unique anomalies, while the unique anomalies will represent the anomalies associated with your filtered anomaly categories. You will have a top-level view of your unresolved anomalies, those that are affirmed, error CAS, or previously affirmed. Graphs are also included for better visualization of your anomalies in regards to the status of your data as well as the anomaly categories across your agency. At the very bottom of the dashboard is a table view of the anomalies associated with your filters. This is where you can utilize your filtering to follow through with your anomalies by clicking on the drop marker to the upper right of the table and selecting Send to List View. The system will generate that list view in the VNV page for you to then resolve those anomaly records. It is important to note this feature will only bring over the first 2,000 records for that list view you filtered in the dashboard. If you are bringing over more than 2,000, then you will need to complete your validation, then go back to the dashboard and retrieve any additional records. 
Keep in mind the dashboard is not in real time and is refreshed every hour, so any changes you make will not immediately be reflected in the dashboard. Additionally, in the second tab at the top of the dashboard will be the Reduce the Footprint, or RTF, which presents the assets covered by the RTF policy at a federal level view, with filters to narrow the scope. Every year on February 1st, each agency will run data anomaly reports to determine the total number of anomalies in its current fiscal year data submissions. The agency VNV goals require that the current fiscal year data submissions must demonstrate that the agency has resolved 100% of its anomalies. And on October 15th, GSA will close the VNV period and monitor the percentage of each agency's current fiscal year anomalies, which have been resolved, to ensure they meet the 100% threshold for the VNV reporting period year that is closed. GSA will repeat this process each subsequent year analyzing agencies' progress towards the resolution target and the total number of anomalies government-wide. To enhance the accuracy and completeness of the agency VNV compliance for the certification of the real property reporting, each agency shall submit to GSA each year a certification letter that meets the following requirements. It should be signed by the agency chief financial officer. It should characterize the accuracy of the data the agency submitted to FRPPMS and the methodology the agency used to evaluate the accuracy of the data. It should describe efforts currently employed or planned as part of the agency's independent verification and validation process to improve the accuracy and completeness of the FRPP data. It should indicate that the agency has implemented data validation and verification as required by OMB Management Procedures Memorandum 2016-01, Improving Federal Real Property Data Quality, Required Data Validation and Verification Procedures, and GSA Federal Real Property Data Validation and Verification Guidance. And lastly, it should report actions taken by the agency to comply with the requirements of the VNV guidance. The agency's data anomaly trending report, which is generated on the anomaly reports page, must be submitted along with the certification letter. Details regarding the due date of the certification, as well as the template for the certification, can be found in the FRPP data dictionary. To get your data anomaly trending report, go to the anomaly reports tab, and on the data anomaly reports branch, you will see the trending reports section at the very bottom. Select the appropriate values for your certification letter, and then click on the Data Anomaly Trending Report in the bottom left corner. And please remember to select Printable View when exporting your trending report. If you have any questions, please utilize the user guide and the data dictionary links on the FRPP homepage, and or reach out to the FRPP Help Desk using the email address frppms at gsa.gov.